Bonjour tout le monde, mon nom est Alex, lui c'est Nao, nous sommes très contents d'être ici. Nous allons faire cette présentation en, en anglais pour pouvoir être compris dans notre maison, les états unis C'est bon avec tout le monde Oui Bon. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with a story. Back in the day, I used to play a lot of computer games. When I say a lot of computer games, imagine excessive amount. Pretty much all my free time, or not free time, invested in computer games. But I loved it. It was a way of connecting with people, and also a way of exploring languages, because they weren't in my native language, which is Romanian. Also, I made a lot of friends with very, very unique people. One of these people, let's call him Andy, was part of my guild. Yes, we had a gamer's guild, and we would go on quests together and play our favorite computer game. What happened is that Andrew was a really, really brilliant strategist. He would pretty much excel at everything that came in relation to gameplay. However, in real life, he didn't have a very good way of communicating with people, and he wasn't doing very well in school. What should we do? Well, as a guild, we tried to be very, very supportive of Andy, and together, we built a computer game. Well, we adapted one of our favorite computer games, and we built a map in it and a scenario that would take people through a journey to learn about how Andy would see the world. We planned on doing that, and we did it. This is a map of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which was one of our favorite turn-based strategy games. Now, we took this and we went to our teachers and we were like, are you ready? You are going to see how Andy sees the world and you are going to help him portray the same skills in real life and communicate better. Our teacher looked at us in a very strange way, which was actually a combination between not really understanding what we're going to say, a little bit of anger because we were asking her to play computer games, which at the time was deemed as, you know, kind of like, oh, these, these kids nowadays are playing computer games and they are slacking school to do that. In a nutshell, she had no idea where we're coming from. So she didn't play the game. And we invested a lot of time. We thought for nothing. But these skills came in handy because we learned how to program. And later, this helped us develop careers. I chose to be a computer scientist because I loved it. And it started all developing the map for this game. Now, let's go back to Andy. Why wasn't he communicating that well? Turns out, Andy has autism. At the time, it wasn't very known and it wasn't diagnosed. But he had autism. And that was the reason that he wasn't properly communicating with everyone, because he was speaking a different language. That doesn't mean that he wasn't good enough to go to school or he wasn't good enough to do certain tasks. It just means that he was speaking a different language. What is autism? We're going to talk a little bit about it. So autism is a complex developmental disability. Um, it's Signs usually appear around the age of three, during childhood. It's also manifested by a difficulty to communicate, as well as not being able to make social contact, eye contact, um, also have the, a very high sensitive sensor application. So they would see, for instance, when we watch the world, we see too much detail, therefore, that detail overstimulates us, and we're not able to form proper communication channels. There are many ways to um, apply technology to work with autism. For instance, many robots. Um, there's Zeno, there's Palo, there's Bandit, Casper, a lot of research projects. But also robots today that are here to use as a tool for the teachers to help the children, to spark that um, passion into them, just like Andy had a passion for computer games. So I have today with me one of these robots. His name is Nao, and he's right here. And he's going to be talking a little bit about himself. 
So now, are you ready? Let's see if this works. Hello. Oh, that tickles. My turn finally. Oh. Hello, I'm now. I'm a humanoid robot. Imagined and manufactured by Aldebaran Robotics, here, in Paris. One of my favorite activities is to assist teachers in special education classrooms. You see, the kids we work with are extraordinary, and often have a beautiful hidden talent. What I like the most, is when we discover it together. Most children with autism are attracted to technology, and are curious to work with me. We play interactive games to learn about turn-taking, work on our memory, label objects, exercise and dance. We can even count numbers or spell words. For example, T-E-D-X, TEDx. Good job. <laughs> As a robot, I can be quite patient and do the same task over and over again for as many times as a child needs without ever getting frustrated. This brings comfort to the kids, keeping them engaged when exploring new topics. We have so much fun learning together. Isn't it the best to have a robot sidekick growing up? Well, I would think <laughs> so. <laughs> Am I right? Bump it, sis. Oh. Nicely done. He does that way better than me. <laughs> hey, Alex. Hmm? This is when you show the video of me working with the children. Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Okay. Why don't you have a sit while we watch the, the video, okay? okay? Good job. Actually, these children um, are part of one of the beta schools, um, a pilot school that implemented the Ask Now solution of working with a robot from Aldebaran. Um, and all these interactions are real. I had the pleasure to work with these children, and they are absolutely exceptional. This last little guy that you see here, his name is Lucas. And he, he has autism, he's nonverbal, he has a lot of difficulty communicating. But he was so fascinated with the robot. It, he could not let him go. He was curious about how the robot worked. He wanted the robot to be his friend. He wanted to teach her the robot things, which again, could be learning for teaching. It was, it was an exceptional interaction. So now, I'm going to use this to transition to the next slide. And I'm gonna show you my role model. Since we were talking about role models earlier, my role model is Temple Grandan. She was... Um, well, the first time I heard one of her talks, it moved me. And this was one of the quotes she had in there. She says, what would happen if autism, uh, the autism gene was eliminated from the gene pool? You would have a bunch of people standing around in a cave, chatting and socializing, not getting anything done. What does this mean? Most, some people, um, people pioneering in the field, like Einstein, Tesla, Mozart, looking back on their life, it seemed that they all had autism because they had a very specific approach of seeing things. And without those peoples, we wouldn't have made progress within those fields. So again, these passions that we have for certain topics, when we meet these children, despite the fact that we don't speak the same language, 
We need to be open to them, find their passion, and allow them to grow within different fields using this passion as a platform. So thank you very much. Me and Nao are very happy to be here. And there we go. That's the end of our presentation. <laughs>